Just wanting to make a quick video on using peel-offs in glass painting. These are peel-offs. Um, they used to always come in this size, but you can get bigger ones now. And hopefully I've got some of those on the way. Lots of different designs. Even in this size, I tend to stick to the larger ones. Um, people have used these for glass painting for quite a long time. And it's an interesting alternative to outlining with normal liquid outliner. But as I said, I just thought I'd show you a couple of techniques, tips for using them. The first is, I'm not very good with them, so I use this, which is uh, transfer paper. It's just an adhesive paper, sorry, an adhesive film, really. He says not being able to peel it off. It's an adhesive film, which you can use to move your peel off from the sheet onto the piece you want it. Now this is getting a little bit old, my sheet. Uh, I've had it for a few years. It's probably about time I had a new one. But hopefully it's still good enough to show you how it works. I just put it over the bit of the design I want. I'm hoping not to take too much else off with this one. And um, If you can get it to start the first bit, you're on a winner. Not that bit, I don't. Let's see if we can get it to work somewhere else. There we go. Once you've got one bit off, it should, there we go, follow. Now, hopefully, it will take off most of the design you or all the design you want but leave behind the bits you don't want it won't won't be perfect it will pick up some of the bits you don't want try to do this in a way where you can see what's happening and I have managed to stick it to my film Let's put it around there, maybe you can see better. You should be able to see it's lifting the design off. So hopefully leaving behind the bits you don't want. Yeah, I've stuck it to the board again, but never mind. You see that coming off? I didn't really want that bit in the corner, so I'm hoping it's going to leave it. Yes, it's left it. And that's just the bit of the design I want. A couple of extra bits in there. But we won't worry about that too much. I get it off there, which I didn't mean to stick it on in the first place. There we go. And now I can put it down on my board, which is what I want to work on. Just check I've got that film the right way around, because it's still got a backing sheet on. And again, the same in reverse. If you can get one bit to stick on your board, the rest should follow. There we go. So now, hopefully, I didn't do that in a place where you could see it very well there, did I? But there it is on the board or on my clear film, which is what I've chosen to work on. Obviously, work the same on glass or uh, this Perspex, adhesive film, whatever you want to use. Now it has left a couple of bits on there I don't want, so I'm just going to use my craft knife to take those off.
Yeah, I think that's it. It wouldn't be unusual for me to come back later and find that there's a bit I've forgotten, but I think that's it. So you can see the peel off on there. Don't be afraid of mixing and matching and adding more peel offs to make a complete picture. You don't have to stick with just what you've been given. I could choose I got some separate bits of holly over here. I could choose to add a, a few of those or I've even got some bells. Let's see if I can get a bell added to that picture. Maybe a little bit of a mismatch there, but you can build your picture up how you see fit. Now, if you want a frame or a board around, what I recommend is this. Let me just move that out of the way. You can always use some of the sides and tops and bottoms of these. So if I were to that's all spare. Make sure it's a, a straight size. I'll cut that off. I'm hoping that will have gone through the vinyl, but not not through the backing, hopefully. And normally I'd do this to some sort of template. But I'm semi-rushing today. So we'll just do it by eye for now. You can even do thin lines of this which will bend to a certain extent. Let me just bring that more into the centre. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I'm hoping I'll get another side on that. Maybe a couple off the top. So try and keep these to roughly the same thicknesses. You can be a lot more delicate about this and take your time over it. with at the bottom there. Now, like with adhesive lead, you're going to want to make sure this is well and truly stuck down before you start painting. If it's not, paint will seep underneath and you'll end up with a little bit of a mess. So to do that, I'm going to use a jar and a tissue. There we go. All right, 
Let me clear my desk a little bit. Get rid of some of the stuff I'm not using. There's our design ready for painting. So I want to make sure that is down solid. So here is an old jam jar. Tissue there. And that should ensure it is all solid down on the film. I say now it's really a case of painting in the normal way, leaving one area to dry with one colour before you do the next. So I'm assuming this is a Robin red breast. So I'll start off with my red. Now what I do tend to do quite often, I find it hard to get small amounts out of the jar I and mean, you'll see I'm using a normal paintbrush this time I, I usually use a solid one but for very fine work I haven't got a very small solid brush so I tend to use a small brush like this now rather than trying to get very small amounts out, say for the berries, I take it from a large area and just move it to the small areas. I find that's a much easier way to pick up very small amounts of paint. Now work like this, you can use, well you can make a nice light catcher out of it, uh, to hang in the window, this particular one obviously at Christmas time, or you could um, use it for making a greeting card. In fact you can combine the two and make it as a greeting card, which can later be used as a hanger. We will look at, at some of the Oh, well, sorry, we will have a project using peel-offs, maybe even some of the larger peel-offs if I can get my hands on some. That's far too fine. And as normal, I shall just pick that up a little bit and check it's done. I can see a little gap there. And a little air bubble there. That really is all there is to it. I'll try and take a picture of this one when I've finished it so you can see the sort how it can end up. So here are a couple I did earlier. I'll just use these as small light catchers, melt a couple of holes into the top and put hanging string or more likely fishing wire onto them. So they can make really nice, if not small in the case of these designs, uh, little light catchers. You can use them for mobiles, you can use them for cards. So it's a nice technique, especially if you want to change from the normal sort of liquid outlining. 
as I said, we will have uh, at least a couple of projects using Peelies in the not too distant future. Do not think it's the easy option, especially on the smaller ones. This finer painting can be a lot more difficult than the painting of larger objects. So it's not the easy option, but it does give a really nice finish. So here's the finished item. As you can see, I've given it a bit of a mottled background. Hope you like it. A couple of things just to mention. Uh, one is you'll notice I stick mainly to the black peelies. This is because they tend not to show up paint on them. If you use the lighter ones, the white, the silver, those types of colors, it tends to show every single spot of paint you get on them. The other thing is if you want to give it a coating of something like clear varnish that will seal it really well I don't tend to bother but they're minor indoors and seem to last okay if you want yours in a conservatory where it might get damp etc a coat of clear varnish um, might not be a bad idea okay if you give it a go I hope you enjoy it and anyway happy crafting <laughs>